new Banksy, new Banksy. Let's talk about the new Banksy. That's right, there's new Banksy out in the world, which means Predictably, the world has gone absolutely mad for it. This time, the big man has taken to the streets of gay Paris. And while there's no shortage at all of coverage, I wanted to maybe use this opportunity to go a little bit beyond the headlines and actually sort of analyze what makes this series quite special. My name's Doug, this is Fifth Wall TV. Before we get stuck into this, I just want to take a moment to say thank you to everybody that continues to watch these videos and engages with me here on Instagram and Facebook. It really does mean a lot to see you guys get really stuck into these conversations and add to the debate. If you don't already, make sure you subscribe to the channel, turn the notifications on so you don't miss anything, and if you like it, give it a like. For this series, Banksy dropped a total of nine new pieces in the streets of Paris. Bar a few exceptions, they were all painted on June 20th, which just so happens to be World Refugee Day. I don't think it was a coincidence that the theme of this project was migration. As always with Banksy, the rumours were flying from the second the images appeared in the streets of Paris, although nothing is officially confirmed as a Banksy until he posts it himself through his Instagram or puts it on his website. And this is really the best way to verify whether or not what you're looking at is actually a Banksy. Let's kick things off with the rats. Banksy pretty much built a name for himself using the image of the rat. Depictions of the rat race in various forms, it was always a critique of the modern work culture. I might be wrong, but I believe this is the first time he's brought the image of the rat to Paris, and for very good reason. But I'll get into that in just a second. Banksy often uses the image of the rat to depict everyday people. For this series in Paris, he has a mixture between the playful and some that carry a little bit more weight. The one with the Minnie Mouse character reading the text May 1968 is particularly grabbing, and it appears to be a reference to a student-led uprising in 1968 that brought France to the brink of a civil war. France is known for its revolutionary spirit, and these protests in particular were part of the milestone that helped forge this identity, paving the way for a new energised culture. By linking the eight to the rat, he turns it into Minnie Mouse, which really draws parallels between the revolutionary spirit of Paris and Disneyland Paris, one of the city's biggest employers. In this piece, the revolution succumbs to consumerism. The reason Banksy's likely never done rats in Paris is because long before Banksy was doing rats in Bristol, Blechler Rat was doing them in the very streets of Paris. The relationship between these two has often been speculated in art circles, although I do believe that it looks like Banksy's giving a serious nod to Bleck when he identifies Paris as the birthplace of modern stencil graffiti. If this is what he means, then, well, it's kind of a bit of a slap in the face to the likes of Fechner, who have been doing this long before Bleck. But that's a story for another video. This rat here in the Pompidou was actually changed overnight. Originally, he had depicted a little rat trying to blow the centre up. Banksy obviously backpedaled on the original idea, came out within 24 hours with a stencil about three times the size of the original, this time depicting a bandana clad rat holding a Stanley knife. This just shows the sheer speed and scale that he's working at. For me, the Napoleon piece was the strongest technically and conceptually. Referencing Jacques-Louis David's 19th century painting, Napoleon Crossing the Alps, Baxi flexes an art history muscle to critique the blind leadership of France's modern leaders. Here Banksy is comparing the leadership that once overthrew a monarchy to the leadership of modern day socialism, which is banning human fundamental rights and looks like it comes from the right. Wait a second, who's that guy? Ah, never mind. Next! <laughs> Left without comment, here Banksy portrays a suited elderly gentleman offering a begging dog a bone. Although if we look closer, not all is as it seems. In fact, I think it looks like the bloody man has gone and sawn the dog's leg off. What's this? The overall comment here seems to be that the dog is blind to the evil of the man. As this is painted on the side of a university, it could be perceived as the university elites controlling the behaviours of the new youth that are becoming increasingly obedient and, dare I say it, stupid. If this does turn out to be accurate, not only is he popping off at the old forms of elitism that we're used to, he's having a dig at the youth as well, which is quite new for him. Nobody's safe anymore. As the Eagles of Death Metal played in the Bataclan in November 2015, a group of gunmen unleashed what stands as the deadliest attack seen on the streets of Paris since World War II, a night that I don't think I need to remind anybody of. Banksy's character looks like a nod to Giovanni Lombardi's 19th century veiled woman sculpture. In this depiction, she stands in mourning by the fire door that so many fled from that night. Aesthetically speaking, it might not be his strongest work, but conceptually, I think it really stands as a beautiful and fitting tribute. 
As with the Napoleon piece, there seems to be symbolism of the veil coming into play once again. And I can't say for sure because this is all subjective, but it could be interpreted that this woman is a representative of females from the global Muslim community that stand alongside the city of Paris in mourning. In an area simply known as the bubble, this was by far Banksy's most symbolic and controversial piece of the series. On the outskirts of Paris, a makeshift refugee centre has emerged to offset the weight from the closing of the Calais jungle. In this piece, we see a young girl painting over a swastika. There are several elements of this that come into play. Without question, the most arresting is the swastika itself. The swastika has a long history of appropriation, and while it has many different meanings in different cultures throughout history, I do believe given the angle of the cross and the context of the environment, I don't believe there's any room for interpretation on what this stands for. The child painting and wallpaper pattern is a nod to his 2008 piece, Go Flock Yourself, although here it appears the child is one of displacement. Far from home, she sleeps with her teddy bear in squalor. As she paints over the underlying issue, it looks like she's doing everything she can to make the most of her conditions, even as she's unable to solve the problem itself. When interviewed by a French newspaper, an Eritrean man named Ibrahim said of the piece, You can tell Mr. Banksy, we will look after it. We will not let anyone touch it. He is trying to help refugees. Not many people want to help us. A statement I don't think we'll be hearing from Nigel Farage and Marie Le Pen anytime soon. Despite Ibrahim's best efforts, it wasn't long until the piece was defaced. You can have all the best intentions in the world, but at the end of the day, you're not the one that has to sit and look at a swastika. As for the rest of the piece as well, the usual Banksy story. There are few around the world that continue to draw attention to our biggest issues as well as Banksy. For me, this project showed him at his absolute best. Playful, engaged, nuanced, and cutting straight to the heart of our biggest flaws. We're all dealt a hand as we enter this world, and for too many, the odds are insurmountably stacked against them. There may be a growing presence of prejudice in the social sphere, but there is not a single person on this planet that can be called illegal, and we have to stand in solidarity with those less fortunate and drive that prejudice back to the hole that it came from. Till next time, my name's Doug. This is good. Le père le grand dit à son petit gars, mais enfin bon sang, qu'est-ce qu'il y a Qu'est-ce que tu vas faire dans la rue, fiston I can't believe it, there's new banks in town.